Danny, and I'm a master's student, a second year master's student in the Communication Technology and Society program at the Department of Communication at Clemson University. Um, I primarily situate myself at the junction of health and school communication. Uh, and, uh, you know, I study how prior media images of certain sections of people within uh, media in general and sports media in particular affect their sort of influence on, uh, you know, health uh, attitudes and behaviors of the public. So in other words, the study of athletes from that particular sections of the people can be influential in, um, in or on the public health attitudes and behaviors. So uh, essentially, I'm going to see or I'm going to study or I'm going to analyze if, for instance, say the CDC can use athletes for, you know, promoting their agenda. You know, there's like so much of research studying athletes' influence on consumer behaviors and attitudes, but there's not too much studying their influence on uh, health. So that is what I'm going to try to find out. Why communication? And then why did you choose your specific master's program in communication technology and society? Good. So, well, the far as I can remember, so the reason why I got into uh, I'd say journalism because I was more interested in journalism initially. Um, so I was I was a cricketer back then. So uh, I was uh, I'm from India. So, so I was a cricketer back there. So um, I, I was really interested in journalism because I want to go into sports journalism. I want to do sports broadcasting and stuff. But then uh, yeah, I was doing my bachelor's. I triple majored my bachelor's. Uh, I did my uh, bachelor's in mass comm, political science, and English. So. And then, uh, you know, I had this one particular research course back then, and then I was so fascinated by it. So I thought, all right, so rather than actually getting into sports journalism, rather than I can do sports communication. So for those people who don't really know, it's almost similar, but they're like sort of different, although like they come from the same branch, but sport communication and sport journalism uh, are two different things. So I had this um, <clears throat> really uh, brief research course, if I could say, uh, and then I was really fascinated by it. So that I decided to get into research side of, you know, communication. And then um, I had a master's degree back in India, but it was, uh, you know, it was pure, you know, um, a journalism stuff. You know, it was more, more of writing. It was more of, um, you know, a production, media production, in other words. So, and then I plan to do a PhD in, in the States because, you know, uh, you know uh, the, the research that, uh, you know, the universities over here, they've been able to produce, I've been, I've been really, um, you know, um, groundbreaking. So I thought I'm going to do my research or rather I'm going to do my doctoral studies here in the US. So I applied to another master's at Clemson and a couple of other universities. Um, because, uh, you know, I wasn't really that confident that my first master's gave me uh, a sense of comfort in that, you know, it didn't really give me that confidence, as I said, to conduct research at the doctoral level. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do another master's. And I applied to a couple of universities and Clemson was one of them. Uh, and here I am two years after and um, almost a graduate and going on to get a PhD at one of the greatest schools. So what? about Clemson's Department of Communication specifically kind of stuck out to you in the application process or helped you decide that that's where you wanted to be? Yeah, so it was it was pretty tough to be honest, you know, uh, circling down on a couple of universities uh, when I was trying to apply. I did eventually apply to three universities and Clemson being one of them, of course. Uh, I was back in 2000, late 2018 or early 2018 and uh, Oh, one of the things that really stood out was the kind of faculty that media effects has. So I primarily, you know, uh, look at all the sport communication, the health communication from a media effects lens. And, uh, you know, we've got really great and, uh, you know, established faculty with media effects. And, um, and then I came in here and then I realized how, uh, you know, uh, how established the scholars in sport communication as well. So I thought, all right, how about I just, uh, you know, merge these two disciplines? I mean, I'm not the first one to be honest, but uh, I thought, um, you know, I just want to advance my own research interests and, uh, you know, go about that. So yeah, the faculty was the first reason why, um, you know, I had to come down to Clemson. Uh, and uh, the other part is uh, sport communication is, is, 
is a pretty narrow discipline, if I would say, and not many universities have the capacity to conduct research in that. And Clemson is one of them. So yeah, th these were my primary motivations to, uh, you know, to bring me to Clemson. Yeah. Um, and then this question is a little bit more directed for undergraduate students, but do you happen to be involved in any organizations or clubs here at Clemson? Well, yeah, sort of. Um, I'm part of the eSports club because I'm a really, really big eSports boss. Have you had any internships or work experience and what was the most impactful part of those experiences? Well, I do have it, but it was back in India when it was, uh, you know, I had two work experience. So when I, after I graduated from my bachelor's, before I got into my first master's, I did work as an editorial assistant. And then I also worked as a sports writer. So both of these were pretty, I'd say, entry level positions. Uh, they were mainly as a placeholder before I can get into my further education, but I wasn't really interested into uh, you know, getting into the industry. So um, I didn't really get into pure journalism jobs. So yeah, um, to be honest, yeah, they did really help me, especially, with, you know, I was right after college and, uh, you know, I was like, you know, probably I'd call myself, you know, a teenager because I don't know anything, you know, I don't know how to like, you know, uh, you know, I've never earned a penny before that. And then I learned to have some responsibilities and I was, you know, in fact, I was managing, um, you know, a couple of people who were older than me. And that was like a sense of pride, I'd say, because, uh, you know, I was like 21 back then and no, 20, I believe. Yeah, I was 20 back then. And then I was uh, sort of a manager for a couple of writers who were like 40, 50. So, um, yeah, it was it, it taught me a lot, like teamwork, you know, it, it wasn't something that I work in isolation, but I work with, you know, 10, 15 different people you know, all with different um, ideologies and, um, you know, um, their own stuff to do. So it, it really helped, helped me to, um, you know, be part of a team, you know, how to work with that, you know, lead uh, all of these people and, you know, discipline. Yeah, I mean, waking up early and then, you know, working within the time frame and then doing all this stuff is, yeah, it, it really taught me a lot. But the second assignment, the sports writer uh, position was, was a, sort of an internship. So uh, it wasn't, again, it wasn't a really uh, position that required a lot of effort. So it was more of a writing news article or sports articles. And um, it really honed my writing skills, to be honest. Uh, um, so yeah, they really helped me before I got into my master's degree. So yeah, I would, for any undergraduates, I mean, regardless of what industry or regardless of academia if they want to get in, I would highly suggest getting at least a brief period of time as work experience. So they know how the market is and, you know, that teaches a, a lot of life skills, I'd say. Um, so where, I know you said that you want to obviously continue your education, but where do you see yourself in either five or maybe 10 years down the line? Oh, all right. So I got into uh, the University of Alabama for my PhD. I'm going to start this fall and then I'm going to graduate. So that's a two year program. Um, and uh, so I'm going to hopefully I'm going to graduate by 2024. And then I see myself in a position that is research intensive at an R1 university. So Clemson is an R1 university. So um, I like to see myself in assistant professor positions. Well, of course, that is a starting position in academia. So um, five years from now, you know, to be honest, that is what I'm going to do. So, uh, well, hopefully I'm going to get an, a promotion. I'm going to be an associate professor with tenure. So yeah, I, I can't see myself in any position other than uh, in being academia. So yeah. Congratulations on your PhD program, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so if you think about the relationships that you've developed during your time at Clemson with faculty members or other students, which ones stand out? That is a really, really difficult question because Clemson has, has been a family to me. I mean, it's not just the people I know, it's not just people that I've been involved with, but any people, you know, just walking down the library bridge and then you see a guy smiling and then it, it, it's a really close I see a connection with all of people at Clemson, but if you want me to choose one, 
uh, I'd say the one with my advisor, Dr. Kramer. Um, uh, he's my thesis advisor and he's been my uh, family, he's been my friend, he's been my everything. There are several days where I spent like hours and hours together in his office, you know, just talking about research, talking about random stuff, you know, talking about career, talking about, talking about how colleges work, talking about how jobs work. You know, there are so many things that we um, essentially talked about that, you know, the kind of bonding that I made with him is, is going to exist forever. I mean, he mentored me to a very great extent that I'd be, um, you know, I'm really grateful for all the effort that he has put in, put into me. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful here to him. I'm not really getting the great words right now, but I'll be forever grateful. I hope he sees the video. Uh, and uh, yeah, I told him how grateful I am, but I'm sure he understands that. So yeah, it's, it's the relationship with my advisor, Dr. Kramer is the most um, uh, most, I'd say, the standard relationship I ever have. But of course, I'd have to give to a shout out to all my peers at, at my cohort, and they have been wonderful people as well. I mean, uh, there were times when I was like really, excuse me, uh, really let down, um, you know. Um, and I used to go to my friends, you know, talk about it, and you know, we used to sit in the office, talk about all random stuff, you know, you know, just slash out all our pressures. Um, you know, all, all that sort. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a wonderful place to be and I'm really glad I, I call Clems my home. Are there any current projects that you're working on, um, like in your research area? Oh, there are a lot of them. So uh, my thesis is currently looking, as I said, um, uh, you know, I'm studying if athletes can be influential on public cell attachment behavior. So um, uh, I actually, uh, you know, mix cognitive psychology, communication as well. So I look at all of these from a psychology perspective, how people process information uh, and how this processing leads to attitudes, change and behaviors. So, um, and there are a couple of others that I'm doing with my current advisor, uh, where we are starting uh, a, a scandal uh, at Ohio State, uh, Chase Yan, he was um, he was caught doing a scandal and then we're studying how the public responded to that scandal and there are a couple of other projects how media responded to um, you know COVID-19 disparities so how they approach in their reporting of this uh, you know of these racial disparities in COVID-19 and then we are also starting a couple of other projects there are plenty of them but um, you know most of them are, are uh, are in sports and then a couple of them are in uh, health but there are plenty of them it, it's going to take a while if i try to mention all of them but all of them all of them have been exciting and i'd really like to thank all my professors for giving me those opportunities and yeah again i'm glad to be at clemson yeah so kind of going along that what advice would you give to a prospective student um that's maybe interested in the department of communication here at clemson yeah, if I was I was talking to a prospective student from China last week, and then um, um, so he was, he, was really, he was asking these questions. And, uh, um, uh, well, I don't know if he can call it a bias, but if someone asked me why I should come to Clemson, I'd just say, just come to Clemson. I have no reason, just come to Clemson. Because, uh, you know, uh, there are some things in, in life that you really can't experience in, in words. Uh, that is, you'd have to physically be there and experience it. So, and Clemson experience is, is one such thing, you know, having great faculty. They're not just faculty, they're, they're more of a friends and family, I'd say, because I was talking, you know, one of my advisor and then, and, you know, not just my advisor, in fact, all of the faculty, they're, they're more of a family and friend than a professor, you know. Uh, they're not really at a distance. They're sitting or standing right next to you, and they're gonna they're gonna help you hold your hand, and then they're gonna help you cross the road. So, um, so yeah, it's the faculty, it's the friends, you know, it's the southern hospitality that really makes things better at Clemson. So, yeah, it's the it's the overall experience. It's not just uh, education at Clemson that that is gonna. Uh, you know, that's going to attract you to come to Clemson, but also the people. It's also uh, the environment, the wonderful weather and, and everything, uh, the food uh, and everything that, that Clemson is really a great place where you can, you know, pursue your educational goals.